Hey, Forge fans, Anthony Urcioli here, your digital host. It is Focus on Forge, and this week we're going to focus on the outdoors. For those of you, however, wherever you may be watching and or listening, you can see the trees behind me. You can probably hear some birds and Forge FC taking part in the pop-up soccer in the park program this week. Uh, we had Alessandro Hojab Rapport, Taryn Campbell, uh, Sebastian Costello, Chris Galongo, all taking part on different days and essentially taking over Hamilton Parks with Soupy. Did you know, by the way, that Soupy is a uniquely Hamilton thing? I had no idea. I learned that. I, I was today days old when I learned that Soupy is a Hamilton thing and it's been around for over a hundred years. So we're going to give you a, a brief history lesson on uh, Soupy and Hamilton and also Talk to some of the players, some of the kids that took part in the pop-up soccer program this week. Also, well, we have to talk Forge and where they are in the standings and in the season right now. Coming off a very disappointing loss, a loss that coach Bobby Smirniot has called the worst in Forge history. By the way, that's the second time he said that this season. He said it after Forge's loss to CF Montreal, and then he said it after that loss against York United 3-1 at home most recently at Tim Hortons Field. and But now, but they, listen, things are still looking okay for Forge. Typically, especially if you use that CF Montreal game as an example, Forge has bounced back considerably after some disappointing losses. You know the players are hard on themselves, you know the coaches are hard on the players, and you know the coaches and players were not happy with that performance last match so next up for forge saturday against atletico ottawa who happens to be the new top team in the canadian premier league here's how things stand right now atletico ottawa in first place with 38 points forge fc in second with 35 they're tied with pacific also have 35 and um Cavalry is 34. I mean, those are your four playoff teams i, I don't see anyone making a, a late push and unseating one of those teams so if those are the four now it's a matter of positioning the beauty, though, Forge FC in complete control of their destiny. Not only do they play those clubs that they're battling against, uh, they play Ottawa once, that's the one this week, they play Pacific two more times, and they play Cavalry again. So plenty of points to be had, and Forge has matches in hand. They uh, Forge has nine matches remaining on the season. First place, Ottawa has seven uh, Pacific has eight, and Calvary has seven. So the nine that Forge FC have are going to put them in a great position going forward. Now, I'm going to give you a quick antidote. Being in control, it, it means everything in sports. Patrick Mahomes, Kansas City Chiefs quarterback, after that AFC Championship game against the Buffalo Bills. Many of you will remember it as one of the greatest NFL games of all time time back and forth ended in overtime tons of points tons of offense Patrick Mahomes after that game shared um, his Fitbit information on his heart rate during that game and it's remarkable when the Chiefs had the ball when Patrick Mahomes had the ball his heart rate was essentially my heart rate when I'm sleeping I, I mean it was complete calm completely confident no worries why if you're an athlete if you're a pro you want as much control as possible. You want the ball. You want to be able to control your own destiny. That's what makes you an elite athlete. You're not waiting for someone else to do something for you. You want to get it done yourself. Mahomes' heart rate was at its highest during that day when his team was on defense, when the Bills had the ball. Why? Because he didn't have the control anymore. He was stressing. He wanted. It was making him anxious. He wanted the control. If you're for Jeff C., you, you are Patrick Mahomes right now. You are in complete control. Only Forge FC can determine whether they finish in first place or, or, or not. And we know it's at stake with first place. We know it's home field advantage throughout the playoffs and a potential home championship game. I mean, you cannot ask for better than that. So this is what Forge is uh, looking at. And I had a chance to speak to... Defender Dominic Samuel, who's returned from injuries, uh, who's returned from injury. He's been around for a while. He's approaching 100 matches. He's been a staple on this Forge club for years now, and um, he's versatile. We saw him play center back for most of his career, and we saw him uh, move 
to fullback in that last match against York. So here's Dominic Samuel and um, how the team is going to rebound from that disappointing loss to York. You know, we've moved on and we're preparing for the next game. Yeah, and the team coach is clearly upset after the last match. Mm -hmm. What's a reasonable amount of time to let that loss linger before you reset for the next one? Maybe 24 hours and then you have to move on. You know, because we have more games and, uh, you know, the next game is always the most important. So, yeah. Yeah, heading down the stretch now and a new team at the top of the table. It seems like every week things are, are kind of flipping. Are you surprised at how tight it is with the top four right now in the league? No. No, those uh, other teams are good opponents and, uh, you know, there's going to be that competition. So the jump is going to be back and forth, back and forth. But we have to do what we uh, know we can do to keep ourselves at the top. And Ottawa now at the top, which is the team you're playing. Is, is it nice to at least know that, I mean, you're still in control of your own. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're in complete control of whether you finish first or not, essentially. Right, right. Which has to be a good feeling. It is. No, definitely. Uh, we know that, you know, if we go in there and we get the business done, that we'll be back at the top of the table, and then we just have to continue from there. Not a lot of people had Ottawa um, this high, maybe at this point in the season. What have they done right this year that, that maybe they've su surprised a few teams? Um, I think the turnover for the team has been massive, maybe a coaching aspect, but um, you know, they they defend. They, they just defend and they get results, so. Um, you know, as a defender, Forge, uh, Bobby talked about, he, he wanted a little more of the, um, more energy and aggression in the press mm -hmm. uh, from the, this club. As a defender who's faced a lot of high presses, what is that like? What is so difficult for the defender to play against a team that's pressing the way you guys can? Time. You know, you just you just don't have time to do or think about what you need to do. And so, like, if, you know, a team like us is pressing, it's just everything has to be like this. If it's not, then, you know, you're kind of at a disadvantage there. Now, Bobby Smirniotis was extremely disappointed after that loss to York United uh, at home. And I caught up with him this week. Now, you can catch the full interview with Bobby on uh, Behind the Beard. That episode is available now wherever you get your podcasts um, on YouTube. It's also on the Forge FC social media channels and forgefc.ca. But here's some snippets of Bobby Smirniotis. This week, how training's gone, how he expects his club to bounce back, and the health of his team, because they are close. Knock on wood. You can. There's a lot of there a lot of trees behind me. I, I don't want to go knock. I don't want to leave the frame, but you, you can knock for me. Um, knock on hard wood. This is the healthiest Forge FC have been in a long time. Chris Nanko, Daniel Kurtzen, I see them out there training. Uh, what's the status on the health of your club? Yeah, everyone is uh, basically fully into training right now, integrated with the team, so we're in a good spot from, from that end. Uh, for the first time uh, this year, um, going back about a week or, or so ago, guys were taking part in bits and parts of, uh, of training. Now we got everyone fully integrated, so it's uh, a good time uh, to be out there on the pitch. Um, after the last match, what's a, a reasonable amount of time to just kind of be bummed out about the loss before you move on and reset for the next one. Yeah, I think you come back your first day uh, back in for training. You have that discussion about the match. You review some of the, the finer points, uh, the points that usually uh, make us better in the games and weren't there. And then you move on. You know, we've got a excellent challenge ahead of us on, on Saturday with, with Ottawa. You know, we're, we're playing to keep ourselves into in uh, first position. Uh, in the standings, we're in a good place, but uh, you know that's one of uh, the first uh, finals of uh, of the year, as they say. It's an important match for for both teams, uh, where the table is and, and what it means. Are you at a point now where almost every match is essentially kind of has that playoff feel to it? Yeah, I think we, we know what we have to do. You know, we have nine games uh, to go. We know where we have to be, and uh, you know we want to be at the top. You know, we've done this uh, for the last uh, few years, and that's where this team wants to be. And uh, the players in the room have discussed about it from the beginning of the year. Uh, and to do that, uh, you have to execute. And we've been good. We have ourselves in a good position. You know, we've stumbled a little bit in the last couple of games, so we just need to do what we've done best after we've had uh, two of these results in the past and, and come out and, and, and fire in all cylinders. And I think uh, I expect that from the group. All right, so Forge FC, Atletico, Ottawa, first place on the line Saturday in our nation's capital. Kickoff time is scheduled for 6.30. Don't forget to check back. There will be a match day preview also three keys to the match for forge and immediately following that ottawa match you will have match in review but we're not done today because we i as promised we're gonna go to the park we're gonna go to a couple parks one downtown one in Waterdown. the first one was uh powell park 
um, that's just off Birch, and Waterdown Memorial, uh, yeah, Waterdown Memorial Park, which of course is in um, Waterdown. On the first day, it was Alessandro Hajab Rapport, Taryn Campbell. Second day, Sebastian Costello and Chris Colongo joined the uh, pickup, or rather the pop-up soccer in the park. Let's check in with the players, um, some of the kids, and also the history of Soupy, which, mind blown, is a Hamilton thing. Did not know it was just our thing, but here you go. Here at Powell Park in downtown Hamilton, and this is Faith, who is uh, collaborating with Forge FC on behalf of the city for the Soupy program. Faith, I you, you told me this earlier, blew my mind, Soupy is a Hamilton only thing. I had no idea. Well, the Soupy program in Hamilton is one of our oldest programs. Uh, we've actually been around since 1909. Uh, we celebrated 110 years recently. Uh, but the Soupy program is a free drop-in program across all the parks in Hamilton, or as many as we can, uh, where kids can come for the day, uh, play crafts, hang out with friends, uh, do activities, all kinds of games like we have um, back here. And several Forge players have taken part in this pop-up program. Uh, Sebastian Costello, Chris Colongo in Waterdown. And at Powell Park, it was Alessandro Hojab Rapport and uh, Taryn Campbell. How, how great is it? This is phenomenal having local athletes come out. Uh, their field is right down, right down from us. Uh, it's really probably very inspiring for all the kids in this neighborhood uh, just to see what could potentially happen. And having like the opportunity to play around here, it's like, it's amazing, yeah. So Taryn Campbell, Alessandro Hojab Rapport, and the kids took part and uh, they played monkey in the middle uh, with the ball. They played uh, kind of this capture the flag type game. And then they split the kids up and went head to head, Ali versus T for all the soccer glory, all the soupy soccer glory. And it was Hojab Rapport, who by the way, his kids named their club the Rainbow Warriors, which is lovely. I mean, it represents love, but also that competitiveness. T's players went with the name Blue Demons. So clearly two different mindsets. But in the end, it came down to sudden death, golden goal, and it was Alessandro Hojab Rapport's Rainbow Warriors that came out on top. Taryn, how? How do you recover from this devastating loss this afternoon? Yeah, a bad day to be a, a Blue Blue Demon team on the Blue Demon team, but uh, we'll be better next week. Yeah, it's nice, it's nice to spend time and give back to the community. Um, some of these kids, I think they've been to a couple Forge games, so it's nice to get back to them. All right, Ali, you are the victor, you and your Rainbow Warriors. You know, these kids, not only do they get to play with Forge players, but they're also getting ticket vouchers. So maybe kids who wouldn't be able to see a Forge game now can. How, how important are initiatives like this not just for the club um, and the organization but also just for the neighborhood and for the community uh, it was really fun it was almost as intense as the weekends uh yeah it's fun to come out here with the community see some of the, see some of the people that uh, live around us and that are supporting us from inside the stadium and from afar as well yeah i think it just shows you like a bigger uh picture of what you're doing uh, you know, you're not just playing soccer. You know, there's a lot of people that care about the team, care about the club and the community. So that's what you see from coming to these. These Forge FC community initiatives were put on hold during the pandemic. And head coach and technical director Bobby Smirniotis is just glad it's back. Yeah, it's important. One, uh, this is the global game. We want to make sure that uh, we're spreading that uh, that cheer of playing football uh, around. And, you know, the second thing, it's something we haven't been able to do in the last couple of years uh, due to the pandemic. So this summer, we've ramped up all these different types of community events. And it's just excellent for the guys. You know, the guys are out here working hard, and it's excellent for them to get out into the community. Um, not only with our fan base, but to grow our fan base uh, and get the, the notoriety of, of Forge FC out there. And I think for all the kids involved in all of these events, I think it's fantastic. You know, you think of uh, yourself or myself as a young uh, eight to 10 year old and uh, you know, you're being visited somewhere by a professional athlete. I think it's one of the best feelings uh, in the world. So we're happy to be out there and we wanna keep on doing more and more of this in the community. And most importantly, the kids had an absolute blast playing soccer with their favorite Forge FC players at the Soupy Soccer Pop-Ups. Oh, we had a lot of fun playing with the Forge FC uh, players. And we're, we're going to their games a lot, so we get to see them play. You have fun as well? Yeah, yeah, a lot of fun. 
Forge and other CPL clubs lost that ability to get out into the community, do a little more outreach, not only keep some Forge fans, but create some new ones as well. So momentum was lost during those COVID years, but we're back and there are amazing, amazing things to come for Forge FC right here in the city of Hamilton. I'm Anthony Urcioli. Remember, keep it locked. Whether it's through podcast, YouTube, ForgeFC.ca, or the Forge social media social media channels, we'll, we'll, we'll be back very soon. We'll talk to you soon. Plenty more coming up. Until then. Anthony Urcioli and Focus on Forge. Subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts to the Forge Audio Network.